sports fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and back by popular demand, I have another card and dice baseball game that I'm going to play. Um, I had requests to keep doing what I was doing before, the World Series and playoffs and, you know, alternate world playoffs, but that... Um, that system is kind of, it takes uh, quite a while to do, and it's very time-consuming, and um, and I feel like I have to keep playing the games in succession to keep up with it. So I'm not going to do that, but what I will do is I will play games, um, selected series. I will pick a series from my, my collection. Um, or pick two teams from my collection and I will play a three game series with the teams um, to, um, you know, to satisfy that itch for me to play the games and for uh, the people out there that enjoy watching my games. Um, so, I have another one here and this one is from 1969. And this is going to be the 1969 White Sox um, hosting the 1969 Seattle Pilots. Uh, very good matchup. The um, White Sox finished fifth in the AL West in 1969 with a 68-94 record. And the Seattle Pilots finished last below the White Sox with a 64-98 record that year. So the White Sox were Four games better than them, and the White Sox in real life were 10 and 8 against the Seattle Pilots. If you know your history, you know that the Seattle Pilots went on later to become, in fact, they went on the very, well, I don't know if it was the very next year that they were already playing, but they only played one year in Seattle as the Pilots, and then they moved to Milwaukee and became the Milwaukee Brewers. And the White Sox, thankfully, are still around. <laughs> so the White Sox franchise has been around since um, 1900, 1901, something like that. So, so today's matchup is going to be <clears throat> um, pitching for the um, the Seattle uh, Pilots will be John Jelnar. I, I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's what I'm thinking. And there's his card. So there's. John Jelnar's card from 1969. And pitching for the White Sox will be Billy Wynn. And there's Billy Wynn's card. So take a good look at that. So, um, it's going to be the same rules as I have been playing. I'm going to play um, the um, basic version of Stratomatic. I'm not doing the advanced or the super advanced. And I am also, uh, but I will incorporate house rules every once in a while. I will use the outfielder's throwing arm to, dis to try to determine whether he cuts down base runners going for an extra base. And I will use the catcher's throwing arms. And I am not going to use the catcher throwing arm from the basic. I'm going to incorporate it the way it would be played in the advanced, which means I will take into account the catcher's um, the, the actual catcher's arm, since this is the reissued 1969 set, so it does have holds and it does have throwing arms and all of that. It has the totally advanced version, which um, the actual 1969 set may not have had. So what that means for Seattle is that um, their catcher... Um, McNertney is a plus one throwing arm, and Jelnar is a zero throwing arm. So that will be a plus, it'll add a, a one to any um, base stealing attempts by anyone um, who tries to steal. Um, although there should be, I would think there should be some kind of a negative in there. It's like a, if you're holding them, it's a negative three. And then you consider the catcher throwing arm and the um, and the pitcher hold. Um, so what do you guys think in the comments? Let me know um, how I should approach that. Uh, for this particular game, we'll just go straight up with what the uh, 
what it is, or what it adds up to. So for Seattle, it's a plus one. Um, and for the White Sox, they have Billy Wynn, who is a negative two hold, and Ed Herman at catcher, who is a plus one. So that will be a negative one for the White Sox watching any of the Seattle uh, players. As I said, it doesn't really make sense to me that you're saying to hold them. Like, for instance, if you were managing Seattle against me and that was the rule and you have a plus one if you watch, then you would just say I won't watch and it would be zero. So I think there should be like a negative three, I would say, if you're going to watch. And like, just the act of watching them is a negative three and then you consider... And then you factor in there um, the pitcher holds and the uh, catcher um, throw rating. So let me know what you think of that. Um, for right now, for this game, it's not going to, I don't think it'll hurt to, to play with the, um, just the arms that way. But that's why, um, like, you know, in the advanced version, you would have to see if the runner even got gets a lead or anything like that. But in the basic, you don't do any of that. So, anyway, we will be getting started here. Um, Seattle is visiting Chicago, so we will have them. Um, we'll have them up first, and they'll lead off with Tommy Harper, and he gets a one-five, which is a walk. And Tommy Harper just happens to be a double A stealer, so he gets on with a walk. That's a walk allowed by win. He is definitely going to steal, and it's only negative one on a double A, and he makes it. So he steals. Now, of course, and then another thing that you have to factor in there is that, you know, a lot of the time it's not going to affect it anyway. Um, and in this particular case, even no matter what um, system we were using, he would have stolen the base. So he does steal the base, and now he's on second with no outs, and Steve Hubley is up. And he gets a 4-9 on Billy Wynn, and that is a fly ball right field C, so that's one away. So he flies out to 9. Um, and by the way, Harper is the center fielder. Hubley will be in right field today. And that brings up Mike Hegan, who is the DH for this game. And he gets a 1-4, which is a ground ball, second base, A++, but that's two away. So he goes out for three. And then Don Mincher is up, and he gets a 6-10, and that is a ground ball shortstop. And the shortstop for the White Sox is Aparicio, and he is a two. And that's a roll of a six, so we will have to see what happens on that. Shortstop, he's probably out. Shortstop, six and two, yes, he is. So, that um, is it for Mincher as he bounces out to short, six to three. And despite getting their leadoff runner on, Seattle comes away with no runs, the Seattle Pilots. And now that brings up... Um, for the White Sox, they're coming to bat, and they will lead off with the shortstop who just made the last out of the uh, top of the first, Luis Aparicio. He gets a 4-6 on um, Jelnar, which is a strikeout. So Jelnar with the K. Carlos May comes up, and he gets a 1-5, which is a strikeout. So Jelnar strikes out the first two guys he faces. And Walt Williams is up, and he gets a 4-11, and 4-11 on Jelnar is a ground ball back to him. He is a, uh, now he is going to be, since these are reissued cards, and we're not, uh, he is a pitcher 4 rated. You'll, you'll recall that the way I was playing the other um, games with the um, basic version was that Pitchers were twos automatically, and um, they only had their pitcher rating um, uh, come in to play for their hitting. But I will be, since these cards are set up so that the pitchers have their own fielding ratings and that Jelnar is a four, that's going to be a 12 and a four. 
which is an out with no runners. So Walt Williams goes out one to three. And by the way, just to go back, Aparicio, as you know, was the short is the shortstop for the White Sox. Carlos May is the right fielder, and Walt Williams is the left fielder. Also, I want to point out, I am playing with the DH, even though they did not play with a DH back in 1969. Again, it's just the way I prefer to play. Doing the pitcher hitting kind of, I, it always kind of throws me off when I um, do all of the, if I have to change the pitcher and then I got to change the pitcher's hitting card and then I got to put the pitcher hitting card in the right place in the lineup and it just, it's more than I really need to be doing, so. Um, if I were doing a National League team, uh, because the National League has always been and still is a uh, pitcher bat, I would do a pitcher bat. But since the American League now does the DH, I'm going with the DH for this game. Uh, Wayne Comer comes up in the top of the second. He gets a 3-4, which is a pop-out to third base. And that's one away. Tommy Davis is up, and he gets a 1-5, which is a fly ball to center field. And that brings up Jerry McNertney, and I believe he's the catcher, and he gets a 4-6, which on Billy Wynn is a double, 1-6, to six, or a single. And he does get a double out of it. So, McNertney hitting a double... And that's the first hit allowed of the entire ball game. And John Donaldson comes up and he gets a 1-9, which is a ground ball to first base. So Donaldson bounces out. Um, 1-3, I'm going to say. Or 3-1. We'll just say 3-1. So, uh, no runs for Seattle in the second. The White Sox come up. And they will have Bill Melton. Belton Bill Melton. And he hits a home run 1-5 to five or a double. And that's going to be a double for Belton Bill Melton. So that's the first hit given up by Jelnar. And that brings up Pete Ward, the DH, and he gets a 6-6 six, six on Jelnar, which is a strikeout. Jelnar striking out a lot of guys here. He's got the uh, uncharacteristic gas today. He struck out 69 in 109 innings, so I don't know where that's coming from, but Gail Hopkins is up, and he gets a 5-5, five, five, which is a strikeout. Unreal. He is just smoking this lineup. And that brings up Ken Berry, and he is the center fielder. He gets a 110, which is a pop out to short. Pop out to six. No runs come in for the White Sox. And that brings up the uh, shortstop for the Pilots. And today that's going to be Ray Euler because he was good defensively but could not hit. He hit 165 in 1969. One of those classic cards from the set that people talk about. And he will get a 1-6, which is a ground ball third base A. One away. So out to third. So 5-3. And that brings up Tommy Harper. And he gets a 2-4, which is a walk. And he's aboard again for the second time. And as we know, he can steal, and he will, and he does make it. And again, he would have been unaffected by this, the, my changes in the rules. So, so far, it's not something that would have mattered. Um, Steve Hubley comes up with one out. He gets a 210, which is a ground ball third base B, two away. So... Um, Five to three. And then Hegan comes up and he gets a four six on Billy Wynn, which is a double one six. And that is a double. So 
Hegan drives in the first run of the game. And the run is scored by Harper. Hegan hits it in with a double. Wynn gives up a second hit and the first earned run. And Don Mincher is up and he gets a 111, which is a ground ball second base. So he bounces out 4 to 3. Seattle strikes for a run and they have a 1 0 lead. Going to the bottom of the third. And that brings up Bobby Kanat, the second baseman. 5 8 is a fly ball left field, one away. Fly out to 7. Ed Herman, the catcher. Gets a 2-8, which is a single 1. And that is going to be instead a line out to first. Line out to 3. 2 away. And Aparicio comes up and he gets a single. So Aparicio gets on with a hit. Second hit given up by Jelnar. Carlos May up, and he gets a 4-7, and on um, Jelnar's card, that is a second base X. The second baseman, though, for the um, Pilots is a 4. That's John Donaldson, and that's an 8 and a 4 at second, which is a one base error. So now the Sox have two on. They are threatening Carlos May on by an E4. But with two down, and Walt Williams up. And he gets a 412, which is a ground ball B. Or wait a minute, no, no, that's a walk on Jelnar. So Jelnar walks him, walks Walt Williams. And now all of a sudden, he's in trouble when he thought he might be out of the inning. And Bill, Belton Bill Melton gets a 3 4, which is a ground ball third base B. So. Five to three ends the threat. The White Sox come away with nothing. And it's always good. I like to play two evenly matched teams. I mean, I could have grabbed like, you know, 69 Orioles or something to play the Pilots or the White Sox, but uh, probably wouldn't have been a good game or a good series. Uh, Wayne Comer leads off in the top of the fourth, and he gets a 6-7, which is a single one to six. And that will be instead a line out to second base. Line out to four, one away. Tommy Davis is up. Two six is a single for Tommy Davis. And he is another speedster on their team. And he is an A, and so he will go two. And that is a 15. And an A is a 1 to 15, and the White Sox have a negative 1 um, multiplier, so he is out. So Tommy Davis gets himself thrown out trying to steal. And again, that whether we had used the revised rules that I was talking about where you subtracted 3 or whatever, I mean, he was thrown out, so that wouldn't have mattered. McNertney 3-4 is a pop out to second base. So pop out to four. Um, no runs come in for Seattle. They got a man on but he was thrown out trying to steal second. And so down by one Pete Ward comes up in the top of the fourth or in the bottom of the fourth to lead off the bottom of the fourth against Jelnar who has been dealing and hit and he gets a fly ball to center field. So fly out to eight. And it's bad that they're not going they're not a lot of X's coming up because the Seattle team was terrible field. Gail Hopkins, five nine, strikeout, that's another strikeout for John Jelnar. And that brings up Ken Berry, and Ken Berry gets a 5-4, which is a catcher card X. And the catcher for the um, Pilots is a 2, catcher 2, and that's a 15. Probably going to be an out, um, and it is a foul out. 
So Ken Berry fouls out to the catcher. Foul out to two. No runs again for Chicago. They can't break through on Jelnar. He's striking people out and he's sending them down to the uh, back to the dugout. They only have two hits. So John Donaldson's up for Seattle. He gets a 2 7, which is a single. He is only a C stealer, so they won't try it with him. Base hit allowed by Wynn. Ray Euler gets a 5-8 on Billy Wynn, which is a fly ball center field, one away. That brings up Tommy Harper, who is a 1-9, which is a fly ball center field, two away. And that brings up Steve Hubley, and he gets a 2-8, which is a single. So Seattle has a little bit of a threat going here with two outs as um, Steve Hubley gets a single and Mike Keegan is following right behind him. And he gets a 6-6 six, six on Billy Wynn, which is a triple 1-2 to two or a double. That's going to score another run for Seattle. And that's going to be a single double asterisk. Right? No, that's a double. It's a double. So that's going to be a double and... That knocks in at least one run. Um, and the run will go to um, the run goes to Donaldson. He scores the run. And the RBI to Hegan. On the double and the trailing runner is Hubley who is a 1 to 14 running um, with Don Mincher up they're gonna hold him and Don Mincher's up and he gets a 4-8 which on Billy Wynn is a single double asterisk and that was a smart move because he just knocked in the two base runners So uh, we get a run by him, run by him, RBI, there are two RBIs for him. Uh, he gives up another hit and another two runs. And so now that's, uh, yeah, that's four runs allowed. And they're going to get action up in the White Sox bullpen as Wynn just does not have it today. So let's see who we're going to get up. Yeah, we're going to get up Don Seacrest in the uh, White Sox bullpen. And now they got Wayne Comer up. He gets a 4-6, which is a double 1-8. to eight. And that's going to be a single double asterisk. So the hits are just keep, they just keep coming. Billy Wynn, this was not his day. Runners are at the corners, and Tommy Davis up. And he gets a 2-9, which is a double. That just knocks in another run. And they're going to hold him because, you know, they might as well. They're, they're pouring it on right now. Um... Two runs come in, and that is Mincher and Comer. And another hit, and another couple of runs, and that's is that six? Yes, it is. Six runs, so that's going to be it for Billy Wynn. Uh, he goes... Four and two thirds, but he couldn't get out of the fifth. And that brings up Don Sequist as he finishes his warm ups. 
and uh, Tommy Davis just batted, so now it's McNurtney's turn with runners at second and third and two outs, and he gets a 210, which is a single and knocks in another run, and the hit parade just keeps coming. So he knocks in, um, he knocks in Tommy Davis. Is that right? Hmm. Huh. No, that's not right. He doesn't knock in Tommy Davis. Oh wait, is this Don? Was that Donaldson? No, that was McNerty. No, well, I think he got a. I don't know. But there, there was definitely a run scored. I think. No, maybe not. That might have been the. They might have been cleared. Um, yeah, that was probably a single, a single that moved Tommy Davis to third, but no run. All right, so, um, and then, uh, and now that brings up Donaldson after McNurtney, so, yeah. And he gets a 2-2, which is a triple, just a plain triple. So, this is just crazy here. Triple, he knocks in. Um, oh, wait a minute, that was Donald. That was, yeah, that was Donald. So, he knocks in. Um, he gets the triple. He knocks in uh, McNurtney and Davis. Run, run, and uh, two run triple. Uh, Seacrest gives up the triple, but the um, base runners were both uh, Billy Wins. So, eight now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yep, eight. It's eight to one. Or, no, it's eight nothing. Eight nothing. And Ray Euler comes up and he gets a three seven, which is a strikeout, so mercifully it ends. A strikeout by Seacrest, ending the inning. But the uh, Seattle Pilots, who were not known for their great offensive uh, prowess, score seven runs in the fifth to take an 8-1 to lead. And that brings up Bobby Knopp for the White Sox. He gets a 6-4, which is a ground ball third base. The third baseman for them is a four, for the pilots is a four, and that's a five, so that's going to be something he's going to get on. And he does with a double. So Bobby Knopp leading off the fifth, the bottom of the fifth, with a double. And only the third hit allowed by Jelnar. Ed Herman up, he gets a one five, which is a strikeout. Jelnar again with his sixth strikeout of the game. Luis Aparicio gets a 1 9, which is a double 1 to 18. So he doubles in a run. Doubles in um, Bobby Knopp. is a run scored. So the White Sox are on the board, but now it's 8-1. Um, and that brings up Carlos May with a 4-5 on Jelnar, which is a ground ball C. That's two away. Is that right? Yeah. So, no, that's the third out. No, that's two away. All right, two away. So, uh... Four three, and that brings up Walt Williams, and Walt Williams gets a six two, which is a fly ball right field B. So the White Sox do strike for a run, and they cut the deficit to seven, which is what the Pilots got last inning. And now they lead off with Harper. He gets a two five, which is a strikeout. 
So Tommy Harper striking out. He had let off the um, fifth, and so he leads off the sixth as well. Seacrest with, with his second strikeout. Steve Hubley gets a 1-6, which is a single. So the Mariners, er, not the Mariners, <laughs> the uh, Pilots just keep getting on base. This is a, a really uncharacteristic offensive output here. Mike Hegan up, and he gets a 1-9, which is going to be a walk, so now he's on base. There's two on with only one out. Which brings up Don Mincher, and Don Mincher gets a 210, which is a home run. Gone. Don Mincher hits a three run jack. So he gets another RB, another three RBIs. One, two, three. That's um, five for him this game. Knocks himself in, knocks in Hegan. And knocks in um, Hubley. So the Mariners just keep piling it on. And the White Sox continue to get tortured here. And Wayne Comer up with one out. And he gets a 2-7, which is a fly ball to left. And Tommy Davis. And Tommy Davis gets a 3-9, which is a strikeout. See Chris with the K. But they get three more. Now they lead 11-1. And that brings up Belton Bill Melton. And he gets a 3-10, which is a home run 1-5 to five double. And he does get a home run. So... Gone for Bill Melton. But it's not really going to matter. <laughs> because we're not coming back from 11 to 1 down. But John Lair gives up his fifth hit and second earned run. And that brings up Pete Ward. And Pete Ward gets a 3 6, which is a pop out to second. Pop out to four, one away. Gail Hopkins gets a 210, which is a double one to 17, and that's going to be a double. So you got to figure Jelnar is running down, probably running out of gas. Gail Hopkins, 5'5, five, five, is a strikeout. And just when I say that, he strikes a guy out. And Ken Berry is up, and he gets a 1 7, which is a single. So with two down, there's now two on. Or no, that was Bobby Knopp. Wait, there was uh, one seven. No, one seven on Bobby Knopp is. This. Wait a minute. Home run, pop out, double, strikeout for Barry. So yeah, that was a strikeout. So no runs for the White Sox, and a strikeout for. Jellar. And the White Sox, did they get a run there? I think we did, yes. We did get a run. So it is now 11 to 1 in the top of the seventh with Jerry McNertney up. And still against Seacrest, who's still out there. And he gets a 5 5, which is a fly ball center. thing about Seacrest, which is funny, he had a 608 earned run average that year, but he only allowed 35 hits in 40 innings. John Donaldson gets a 5-4, which is a fly ball center, two away. And that brings up Ray Euler, and he gets a 6-2, which is a ground ball pitcher B. No runs in the seventh and there's going to be a new pitcher for the um, pilots Jelnar goes uh, six yes he goes six they're going to take him out um, and they are going to put in probably not Bob Locker
They're going to bring in, oh yes, definitely. They're going to bring in Jim Bouton, the Ball Four author. You know I had to get Jim Bowden out there. And Bobby Knopp is um, up and to lead off the bottom of the seventh. And he gets a 4-8, which is a line out to shortstop. Or no, that's not Bobby, that's Ed Herman. Um, but it's still a line out to short. Line out to six, one away. Luis Aparicio gets a 4-7, which is a walk. So Aparicio has been doing his part today with a, with a double, a single, and now a walk. As Boughton walked a man. Carlos May comes up. He gets a 4-6, which is a strikeout, two away. And that brings up Walt Williams, and he gets a 6-11, which is a ground ball to the pitcher, and Boughton is a two-rated pitcher, as they mostly are, and that is going to be an out. So, Williams out 1-3, to three. the White Sox get no runs, and Seacrest will not pitch to lead off the 8, it's going to be somebody else for the White Sox pitching. Um, and that will be Jerry Nyman. Jerry Nyman comes in. He'll face the um, he'll face Tommy Harper, Hubley, and he in the top of the Seattle lineup. And so Seacrest, let's see, four and one third, so he went two thirds, two and two thirds. And that brings up Tommy Harper, who comes up with a 4-4, and that's a fly ball to, no, wait a minute, that's a fly ball to right, so. That's one away. Steve Hubley gets a 4-8, which is a strikeout, two away. And that brings up Hegan. 4-9, which is a home run, 1-15. to 15. And that's going to be a home run. Mike Hegan going deep. And he's having quite a day himself. He's got three RBIs and three runs scored. Nyman gives up, that's his first hit. And our an earned run, and Don Mincher comes up, and he gets a 3-12, which is a ground ball, second base. The Mariners, actually, they do get a run. I put that down, down as zero, mistakenly. So, it is now 12-2. And Bill Melton comes up, 1-8, is a ground ball shortstop, one away. Pete Ward comes up. He gets a 6-8, which is a home run, one, or a fly ball. And that's going to be a fly ball to right. So, fly ball nine, two away. And Gail Hopkins gets a 4-7, which is a walk. Is the second walk allowed by Boughton? Second base runner, too. And Ken Berry comes up with a 1 5, which is a double 1 to 5. And it's going to be a single double asterisk. Boughton allows his first hit. Runners are at the corners with two outs. And 3 6 on Kanop is a single, which drives in a run. So he gets an RBI, and the run is scored by Gail Hopkins. Bouton giving up an earned run. And then um, that brings up Ed Herman. He gets a 6-7, which is a ground ball second base. The second baseman is a 
four, John Donaldson, that's a 12 and a four at second. And that's an out. So he goes four to three. That ends the threat. But the White Sox do get another run. So they have three on the board. And so the White Sox are losing now 12 to three. And Wayne Comer is coming up in the top of the ninth. He gets a 1-8, which is a ground ball short. One away. Tommy Davis gets a 6-6, which is a walk. And that brings up Jerry McNertney. He gets a 4-8, which is a strikeout. John Donaldson gets a 6-6, six, six, which is a walk. I can't imagine having to really manage this White Sox team through a season. Ray Euler gets a 2-9, which is a single one to 16. So even the 160 hitter jumps in and gets a single. So... What did uh, Donaldson do? The single and then... Uh, so the bases are loaded and that brings up Harper and he gets a 2-4 which is a walk and forces in another run. And that run is in the person of Tommy Davis. And then uh, Steve Hubley, and that's, yeah, that's an RBI. That's what I forgot to mark down. And the run for Davis. Hubley gets a 312, which is a line out second base plus injury. Line out to four, but the injury is a an 18, so Hovley, who is the right fielder, is out for the rest of this series. So the Mariners scored another run. Is that all they got? Yes, it appears to be all they got this time. So right fielder Hovley is out of the game, and he will be gone for the series. They've lost him for the series. And they need another right fielder to replace him. And... Uh, that will be um, well, they don't have a lot of right feelers out here, do they? They don't have a lot of guys who specifically play right field. But they do have Pagliaroni, who can play right field, and he is a five, but I'm sure they're not worried about defense right now. So Pagliaroni is going to go in at right field, and they will pitch to Ed, no, not Ed Herman. Ed Herman made the last, uh, made the last out. So it's back to the top of the order to Aparicio, who has two hits and a walk this game. And he gets a 1-3, which is a ground ball shortstop. 6-3, one away. Carlos May gets a 1-7, which is a ground ball first base A. And then that brings up Walt Williams. And he gets a 3-7, which is a fly ball left field. So there the game mercifully ends and the final score was 10, 11, 13 to uh, 3. And that's going to be it for me. Uh,
Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. I hope you enjoyed the game. I certainly did. My White Sox got trounced by a very bad Seattle team. We will see you next time.